So we've talked about uh, three networks so far. Let's talk about a fourth one, uh, Pinterest. Before that, I just want to show you something interesting here. By now, you should have heard of the website Wikipedia. It has been around over a decade, so if you haven't heard of it, Wikipedia is the global encyclopedia, international. It's in many languages. It's got five million articles in English, for, for one at least, and there's an article on just about everything. So over on Wikipedia, there's an article, List of Social Networks. List of Social Networking Websites. This is a list of major active social networking sites and excludes dating websites. For defunct social networking, see this other list. This list is not exhausted and is limited to notable, well-known sites. And this is a screen that lists a bunch of networks. And here I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to browse, and browse, and browse. And this is a huge list of social networks, plus the, plus the uh, footnotes. But alphabetically, you know, from academia.edu all the way down to zupa.com. So all of these networks, 99% of them you haven't heard of. 99% I haven't heard of. Because there are so many of them and for so many niches and demographics and such. So if you notice here on this article, there's a column of description or focus. Okay, what is Academia EDU about social networking site for academics and researchers. So, you know, people in academia have their own social network. Launched in 2008, about 18 million users. Registration is open. And what rank does it have? Alexa is a website that ranks uh, sites globally. You know, there's millions, hundreds of millions, billions of websites. Alexa is a website that is trying to rank their traffic globally. The number one traffic site in the world is google.com. The number two is Facebook. But in this article you can look up a bunch of networks just for fun. You can say, okay, show me the Alexa rank and then it'll show you right there. Number two, Facebook. There's Twitter. It's the eighth most visited site in the world. LinkedIn is twelfth. Sina Weibo. You've never heard of it, but it's just, this is the most popular social network site in China. So if you're going to reach a Chinese audience, get on Weibo. I'm probably saying it wrong. But get on that network because that's that audience. Um, so this description and focus should then help you figure out, okay, I have, this, I have these products that are specific audience. I really need to reach the Norwegian audience. Can I reach the Norwegian audience? Yeah, there's that Beepo. Or Beep. Beep.no, um, Norwegian community, requires Norwegian phone number to register. Busu, language learning community, headquartered in Madrid, Spain. Cafe Mom, Klug, uh, Epernicus, eToro, Face Party, Friendster, etc., etc., Mog, Ning. Hot knock, class sneaky. Connect with old classmates, popular in Russia and former Soviet republics. Orkut, popular in Brazil. So there's all of these networks out there. We're of course talking about seven of them in this course of two classes. But I'm showing you this because here, this article on Wikipedia, list of social networking sites could be a resource for you to find the particular audience that you're looking for. And again, Wikipedia. You can find information on just about everything here. So, let's see if I scroll down, what does it say about Pinterest? And the thing about this, because um, this article actually, it, it says right at the top, it's not complete, it's not exhaustive. Some things are out of date, unfortunately. Pinterest here, it says when it was launched, 2011, 
but it doesn't have anything about demographics. That's because, oh, these articles, you know, they, this particular article has to be researched and vetted and, and then approved of the updates. So this one hasn't been updated yet about what the Pinterest, um, you know, uh, audiences and so forth. But it's still good to look at it so that, um, so you can look right here, Ren Ren, a significant site in China. So again, if you're trying to reach a particular business or demographic science-oriented multimedia platform or network for scientists, science stage. We're going to use Pinterest now. Any questions on this article before moving on? Let's go to Pinterest.com. It's going to ask you to sign up and such. We'll, we'll do so in a moment, but let's look at why another social network. Let's look at what's different about Pinterest. I, I go to the Pinterest homepage here. So if you've already got an account, don't sign in yet. But I go here, and your screen might be different. But mine says, Alton Brown uses Pinterest to tackle game day recipes. Join Pinterest to discover and save creative ideas. Okay, so Alton Brown, he's a famous chef. He's on TV and such. He has uh, various TV shows. Um, if I refresh my screen, if I just click refresh or reload, it says, she used Pinterest to think outside the classroom. Join Pinterest to discover and share creative ideas. Let me re reload that again. He used Pinterest to start his rooftop oasis. Join Pinterest to discover and save creative ideas. This is telling us what, why Pinterest is valuable for regular people. Pinterest is another social network where you can post, reply, share, like, just like all the networks. Then why do I need another network? Well, the demographics of this one do seem to say, do seem to indicate, indicate that the, the majority of users that use and like Facebook most are women. So if your audience is female. This might be one of the ones to really get on and become good at and build an audience. Um, this one seems to have pretty organically gone toward that audience. Um, so here in this intro screen it's telling a regular person why would they get on Pinterest. She used Pinterest to step up her style. Join Pinterest to discover and save creative ideas. And so they're all giving you this sort of like why, like a use case about why, and then join to discover, join for ideas, join whatever. And we saw Alton Brown a moment ago. He used Pinterest to score extra points on game day. So notice the the action of it all, the why of it. If you take my social, if you take my SEO class, I talk about the concept of why, and we talk about a marketing plan and all of that. And the concept of why on business, on social media, is why are you doing this? Yes, there is an answer to make sales, but so is every other company in a capitalist society. Why are you in this business for real? because I have these handmade products that I learned to make from my grandmother that I want to sell to more people to connect with them and have, you know, feel good about it and sell them. So that why about why you do anything, especially on social media, is a very important thing to think about because that, in, that entails about what am I going to post again? What am I going to share again? How am I going to reply? It all goes back to the why. Why are, your, why are you online? What, why is your business existent? Why are you doing it? And here they have a very good way to sort of tell you that subtly. Why is someone using Pinterest? Okay. In short, to condense that down, to have a very cool Super Bowl party. Because this person got a bunch of recipes and ideas to make game day great. This one over here. A teacher using Pinterest to help teach a topic about science. She found all of these great links and videos and pictures to teach her science class about dinosaurs. So the why. Why are people using Pinterest? And on any of these social networks I've said before, 
there's the two sides of the coin, the frivolous aspect and the business aspect, and they're both legitimate. I don't want to say frivolous to put it down. I'm just saying the personal aspect and the business aspect. They're both legitimate. I can use Pinterest to find cool pictures of Darth Vader all day long, and that's what's fun for me, and that's how I'll use Pinterest. But for as a business, I'm going to share stuff on Pinterest that hopefully in the end gets me impressions and better yet, conversions. Because now think about it from the other point of view. She is looking for pictures of dinosaurs for her class. For class, She's looking for content for to learn about the solar system for her class. I am a company that is educational, that sells books and videos about dinosaurs and the solar system and rock formations and such. And therefore, I'm going to get on Pinterest and share some of that content with a link back to buy it so that she can find it and maybe buy it. Not just share it, but maybe buy it. She's looking for stuff to step up her style. My company is a vintage clothing company. So I'm going to share pictures of the clothes. I'm going to share pictures of people wearing my great styles. And she, perhaps, will find those great pictures and not only see the picture, but it'll have a button that says buy now and go to my website to buy it. So this that I'm saying for Pinterest, if you think about it, applies to everything. It applies to Twitter, Facebook, Google+, it will apply to Instagram, it will apply to LinkedIn and YouTube, everything. That is the whole point of all social <laughs> media for business, to reach an audience, to answer the why. Why am I following you on, on Twitter? Because once in a while you tweet coupons and I want to buy your products with your coupons. And it's not coming up anymore, but Alton Brown, you know, showing here, big old celebrity, over here, Chef Curtis Stone, uses Pinterest to dig into vegetable gardening. Uh, I don't personally, I don't know this chef, but okay, let's assume I know the chef, they're, they're on TV. I see those amazing recipes that he's making. I want to make those amazing recipes. I'm going to follow him on Pinterest because he's probably going to share his tips and tricks on how to make that amazing risotto. So let me get on Facebook, uh, let me get on Pinterest and follow him. And every time he posts something, it's useful to me. And once in a while he's going to post, we've got a new book. Don't forget to buy my new book on Amazon. And I'm going to go buy his book on Amazon. So that's the point of all of the social media. And when we go here to Pinterest, it asks us sign in or sign up as a person, not as a business. Before we create the account, let me show you here. Pinterest.com slash Mosher13. This is a colleague of mine former student who took all my stuff to heart, I like to think, and got online and has a business as a web designer and such, and has a Pinterest. You know, he's got all the accounts, he's got a Pinterest, and it looks like he's using Pinterest pretty well, because by one measure, having 33,000 followers is pretty good. So. This is an example of a Pinterest account. And the thing about Pinterest nowadays is it's really, really naggy in that you can't really see anything on Pinterest until you sign in. Because I want to see, oh, what's so great about this account? As I scroll down a little bit, it'll start to nag me. There's more as long as, as soon as you sign in. I want to see what's this about here. I click on that. It's going to keep nagging me. Sign in before you see anything. So it's a little annoying. When I would teach this before, it would let you see it a little bit more. It would, it would let you try it before you buy it. But now it really wants you to sign in. So I can't show too much about it until we sign in. But the point of how Chuck is using it is that he is right here. I am a website designer and developer, husband, father, outdoorsman. I'm enjoying passing along inspiration and knowledge. It's working. 33,000 and a half followers. Every time you post something on Pinterest, in theory, 33,000 people see it. What's 1% of 33,000? Remember the 1% doctrine again? 33,500 divided, uh, or not divided, uh, times 1%, 335. 335 people are really the ones that are most active, most engaged, most 
uh, probable to actually do something. Because a like is easy to do, a follow is easy to do, a reply is easy to do. A buy is so hard. Suddenly my mouse gets so heavy, I can't move it over to the buy button. But 335 people, 1%, could be enough that actually are engaged enough that really follow through and hire him, um, request a quote, etc. And obviously, as I've said before, that's a very low number, but it's a it's a it's a realistic number, one percent. Maybe your content and is such is much more amazing, and you're closer to twenty five percent CTR, fifty percent, ninety percent. I don't know, but one percent CTR is really our click through rate, our conversion rate is really realistic. So that's why we're always trying to get followers on all of our social media. Because always think of the one percent that really will follow through, and so you can look at other people's accounts. Just like on Twitter and such, you still want to follow your business. Still wants to follow other accounts, primarily for inspiration and reconnaissance. What is the competition doing? What are they posting? What's going to inspire me? So here, Chuck's doing something right. So I want to see what's he doing right. And basically, he's creating content and putting it in different boards and again when we create the account we'll see what is it all mean how do you do it but he's creating content and organizing it into specific sections so that people can follow a specific topic he's got 33,000 followers but perhaps uh, more people are more interested in this or that and so they can follow individual boards individual content concepts and we'll see all of this together, but um, he's an account I recommend to check out and learn from. Pinterest.com slash Moshe13. What we need to do is we need to create an account. But let me get a show of hands. How many of you currently have a Pinterest account? How many of you currently have a business Pinterest account? Okay, so if you have a, a personal one, you didn't do it wrong, but you did it wrong. You, you didn't do it wrong in that you're using Pinterest, but you did it wrong in that you're using a personal one. And they don't, unfortunately, make it very easy for you to know that you did it wrong. So if you've already got one, if you've already got an account, I believe you can convert it. Uh, it's on the next screen here. Uh, and so if you don't have an account yet, we're going to create one. If you do have an account, we can, cre we can convert it. Or we can do again what I've been saying is why not create a throwaway account to learn this stuff, learn it, and then apply it to my real account. You need to decide that. In any event, you see really small here? Business. This is where you go to create a business account. It's right on the home page, but it's not obvious. So let's try this. Pinterest.com. At the bottom, click business. business. Basically it takes you to business.pinterest.com. Get discovered by millions of people looking for things to plan, buy, and do. Listen to those action verbs. Pinterest I think really is on message about why you would use it as a business. Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus to various degrees are also okay about it, but I think Pinterest really sells it to you. This is why you want to get a business account on Pinterest, because you want to get discovered, you want to get impressions for people to do conversions, plan things, hire you to plan things, buy things, buy your things, do things, do your things, you know, read your lectures, read, uh, watch your videos. Already have an account and you did it wrong? convert it. But again, I'm not going to go through convert. I'm going to create a new account just to see what it looks like from scratch. And this screen, this business screen, is also very useful that you should look at at some point to look at the various tools, success stories, you know, featured case studies, how are these people doing it, free ideas on how you, to, how you should do it, the blog on, on how they're, on how they're uh, making things better, Dear Abby, how do I use Pinterest for my business? That's the question that always everyone is asking for. So here's some, um, 
here's some things to read about. Why should I use Pinterest? On social, people don't really want to see content from businesses because it feels disruptive. You know, another ad? I'm going to ignore it. But on Pinterest, people love business content. 75% 70, of pins saved come from businesses. Plus, you get a higher return on your investment, ROI, because unlike news feed style content, pins last forever, meaning people can always go back to your Pinterest and see it again. Whereas on Twitter, that, that tweet is gone a month ago. On Facebook, that pin was that post on Facebook was gone three weeks ago, four days ago. On Pinterest, it's always there. You log into the account, you see all their stuff organized. You, there's no organization for tweets. It just goes on and on and on. Same thing to a large degree on Facebook. Google Plus has Google Plus has uh, collections, which is their version of Pinterest. So Pinterest is doing something right. Anyway, that's interesting stuff to read on your own. I want to click Join as a Business. It'll ask you for, for some basic stuff, email address and so forth. If you already used an email address for your real account and such, for the moment just make it up, put a password, business name. A lot of these networks are very consistent because these concepts work. How they implement things vary. So here, business name. This is the name that of my business as how it will appear on Pinterest, but it's not my Pinterest address yet. Just like I showed Chuck's Pinterest account, which is Mosher13. That username there we will set later, but his name on Pinterest is Chuck Dow. That's what it's asking you there. Put a business name. Your, your vanity address, your custom address, we will select it elsewhere. Pictures Bakery business type. So here's a spot to select what your business type is, and this helps you because then it'll have your business, your content of your account shown to more people that would care, findable by people that would care. So one of these should fit. Website optional, but you should put it in. You should have a website because uh, these, as these networks evolve, they will have more features, and eventually they'll have the, p the feature for you to buy a pin directly from Pinterest. You click the pin, you put your credit card, you bought it. But at the moment, we still have to guide people back to our website to actually buy the product. Put my website there. And as I've said previously, I can also use this, think outside the box a little bit. I can use this address here to put something like victorsbakery.com slash offer slash Pinterest 01 HTML, a landing page, a page on my website targeted specifically to people from Pinterest. Really, the only way people are going to get to that link on my website is via Pinterest. That's how you entice people. That, in many reasons, is how you entice people to follow you on Pinterest. I'm already following you on Facebook. Why would I follow you on Pinterest? Exclusive content on Pinterest. Yes, it's double the work, but <clears throat> more you could get more returns on your investment. So I'll create that account. Yes? Um, for my, my business is uh, on the Indian Tennis called American Cosmetics. Am I going to tell that's a good question. What's a good answer for that? Um, you have to check with Mary Kay if they allow you that. Because think about this in terms of the real world. In the real world, do they allow you to put an ad on the Union Tribune, for example, to advertise yourself? That's basically what we're doing here. Okay. So you have to check with them, basically. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Create the account and then, oops, already taken. Okay. So put in an email address. Not taken. You guys took my email address.
Okay, so Pinterest is also very good here. Uh, Twitter does does this, but again, Pinterest is doing a lot of good things for businesses. In that, here it's saying follow five topics. This is telling you use Pinterest to get an audience. Yes, but you you know get use Pinterest to get followers. Yes. But you should also be following accounts. Your business should also be following accounts. Either other businesses or other regular people. The point of that is for the inspiration. What is everyone else doing? See what they're doing. Do it better. So here, if we skip this, I don't think it lets you skip it, but if you skip this, then it will... <coughs> If you skip this, Pinterest will feel like a ghost town. I don't see anything. You do want to follow content. So here, it's giving you all these suggestions. It doesn't know anything really about your company, so it's giving you all these suggestions. It's saying follow five of them. So Disney characters, animal humor, sports cars. You can also search at the top. Let's say I'm going to select a couple of these. Food and drink. quite seeing everything here. Okay, let's just say weddings for the moment. Okay, I'm not seeing everything that I think. I put in a topic here. Cookies. <coughs> cookies, decorated cookies, birthday cookies, chocolate cookies, etc. So just select five or search for a few and select some topics. Once you get five, you can do more than five of course. But once you get at least five, click done. You may then get a screen about the Pinterest button. Just skip that for the moment. There should be a skip down there. I'll explain what that button is a little bit later. We'll just go ahead and skip it. I'm skipping the button. It's going to say, are you sure you want to skip it? Yes, let's skip it for the moment. All set, we're building your home feed with pins from these, and it goes away. Welcome to your home feed. Click any pin for a closer look. So let's just confirm here. Has everyone managed to either sign in or sign up? Anyone having any trouble? I created an account brand new, and at, for me at least, it's telling me right away this is your analytics. Again, Pinterest is doing it right. We had to go find the analytics on Twitter. It's all, also there somewhere hidden on Google+. You're not going to see analytics insights on Facebook until you've got traffic. They're all kind of lagging behind in this aspect. Pinterest is right away telling you, you're a business, you care about your stats. Check out your stats. Visit your stats, which you can also get to by clicking on uh, your profile, but we'll see that later. Just um, for the moment, you can ignore that. You don't have to click anything. Just ignore it. But we need to get the we need to look at the anatomy of what Pinterest is. And some of us have some experience. Some of us don't. So we'll we'll talk about this a bit. Uh, top left corner, we have the the Pinterest logo. Which if you click that, that'll always take you back to your home screen. Basically, it'll take you back to where what every, everyone is sharing. When you post something, when you pin something on Pinterest, it'll show up here, but mostly you'll be seeing the stuff of the accounts that you followed here. Again, I'm seeing a lot of stuff, a lot of great inspiration for me to also do. Look at how people make these pictures, and I don't want you to get discouraged by saying, by looking at this stuff and see, this looks amazing, I can't do that. You can do this. You can make these pictures. This picture of this, you know, the big thing that sells this is that, you know, it's the actual little egg it's kind of morbid, but it's the actual little egg uh, peep thing to eat. Uh, it's just, it's the thing created, and then it's a photo. It's a close-up photo of that that looks really nice. Yes, it's got blur and all of that, but when you get close to something, it focuses on the object when you take its photo. All of these photos that look amazing really are the product. You know, technically, this is not an amazing-looking photo for various technical reasons. 
Visually, though, I like it because it shows off the product. I would like it better if it was a little more close up, but obviously this is a bit more of a beginner account, and they are taking a photo of the product in totality. I would like to get a closer photo of the product to show the detail. This is one here that's kind of also a little bit of a beginner. And you're going to get a sense of this as you look at it, but what I mean here is the lighting isn't so good. Are they trying to make it look dark here? Probably not, because I can't quite see the bunny deviled eggs, so that needed more light. This is obviously a professional one here, but you can do this. You can have your model stand in front of a plain wall background with a good amount of light. You know, if I'm standing here from the light of outside, take a photo and me put it on Pinterest. As I do more of this and get better at it, your content will get better. But the reason to see the competition is to see what they're doing. And you're going to maybe not have a, a degree in graphic design to understand what's good, but y you know what they say about art. I don't know what's good, but I know what I like. So if you see these things and I like this, how can I do that? Well, it's just their product on a, on a gray background with a photo, you know, standing above it, taking it. I can do that. You know, I may not be able to make that, but I can kind of make the photo. And here, this is, I personally don't like this photo, but people will say, wow, so yummy, chocolate. <coughs> you know, it's kind of a jumbled kind of photo, but it gets the point across. And what that is, is Reese's Chocolate Peanut Butter Popcorn. I think it's a weird old mishmash of stuff, but some people are going to say, that's great, I want that. And then they designed it by putting their company info on it, which I think is a little awkward in this case, but... It's getting you to look at everyone else. This photo right here, great cake, bad photo. Why? Background, background is distracting. They probably had the idea, let's put the background, kiss me, blah, blah, blah. I can't really read anything else there. And it's distracting, very noisy. Black and white behind there, distracting. I can't focus on the pictures. So photography is complicated, but it's really about focusing on your product. All the best photos. Look at this one. Yes, there's a blurry background. Blur is not bad. Blur is good if you do it right because it focuses on your product here. In this case, blur is bad because that's words. I want to read words. I can't read. It. It's blurry. Blur is good here because it focuses on the product. That one has no blur, but it's close enough to the products to catch your attention. I can do this. I'm a baker. I can toss a bunch of cookies in on the table and take a photo. I got something to share. This is what Pinterest is. Pictures. Well, I'm sold. I want to buy this cake. What? How do I buy it? We'll see when we create some content, but basically there's always going to be a link back to your shopping cart. We'll see how to do this soon. But that's the point. Entice people with amazing photos. Click the, the thing, and it went over to cakesdecor.com. Buy now, comment now, shop, etc. Sweet and sour chicken. Look at that amazing cake, Elsa Barbie cake. So I click on that. This particular one didn't have a link attached. If I click on it, it just showed me the picture, so it's kind of a dead end. But this other one over here, I click on, on that, and it does have a link attached at the bottom there, and that took me to go buy the actual thing, read the recipe, share it, and so forth, read the article, buy my cookbook. Analytics at the top left looks like they put it up there now. Overview profile audience. This will be pretty empty if it's brand new, so don't bother just yet. Now they're also making a little more obvious ads. You can do promoted pins here as well. You've got boosted posts on Facebook. You've got promoted tweets on Twitter. You've got promoted pins on Pinterest. Reach more people if you invest. Literally invest money. With very low investment, you still reach a good audience, especially if you're just starting. With even more investment, you reach more of an audience. You get more impressions. But still, impressions are only part of the puzzle. Conversions. You know, if I've got 
I don't really see really anything really bad. But if, let's say, I found a really bad photo, if I find a really bad photo, would I want to spend five dollars? You know, this I see what they're going for, but this photo doesn't isn't that good. The background is kind of weird. The shadows are harsh. That that flash makes a weird harsh shadow. Technically, it might not be a best best photo. Would I want to spend five dollars, ten dollars, two dollars to get more people to see that? People are not going to quite get enticed by the photo, perhaps, to actually then click to hire us to do tattoos. So it's still about your content. What I'm getting at is the impressions. They're going to send your photo off to possible people that would care to hire you for whatever or buy your product. But it's still really up to you to have good content to entice people to become conversions, to actually click and buy or hire you or send you an email or um, request a quote. <clears throat> Alright, so we've got a search box. We'll get back to that. One of the big important things to look at, but we'll look at search in a moment. And next to that, on search, you've got these six, you've got these two columns of, of eight little lines. If you click on that, this is for you to go look at various sections of content about in Pinterest. Show me what's happening right now regarding holidays and events. This is the content of what people are sharing right now. Look at that. Triscuit, big famous company on Pinterest. A bunch of regular people also. So companies, regular people, beginners, pros, intermediate, everyone sharing. Um, I'm going to share content that falls into this category, holidays and events, because when someone goes to this category, my stuff may show up here. Now it is a big stream of content that goes on and on, and the new stuff pushes away the, the old stuff. So you will get some traffic and such from here when people browse this, but we'll look at other ways as well. I can look at the home feed. I can look at popular, what's popular at the moment, and the point of looking at popular is to in, uh, give me ideas again of what to share, how to share. This is very basic right here. Roasted cauliflower white cheddar soup. It's just a, a close-up photo of that soup. Tasty. I want it. I want to click, maybe buy it or read how to make it or, or whatever. So again, it's about content that entices people. Pinterest is the, is the most visual of them all. It's screens and screens of content, of pictures. So you really have to think about photography. And you don't need a big, expensive Canon camera, Nikon, Sony, Pentax, whatever. You don't need a big $2,000 camera. You've probably got a pretty good camera in your pocket. These things here, probably, depending how old it is, shoots HD content, high-quality photos. And you say, well, my photos always look terrible. Think about how you're taking them. Of course it's going to look terrible when you don't have very good light. Right now, if I took a photo of myself, it probably wouldn't be that good. The human eye is an amazing camera, very advanced. There's no camera that humans have created yet that matches the eye. Because our eyes can focus instantly. Our eyes can you know, open and close to let more light in. And this looks like a perfectly bright room. If I pull out my light meter, it'll tell me it's dark in here. And the camera is not advanced enough, like our eye, to take a great photo. The short answer, light. Get as much light as you can on your subject so that the camera can capture that and give you a good photo. So you don't have to have a high-end camera, you just have to have something interesting to photograph and light. And notice also these are close-ups. Notice this one here. I can do that. I can do a couple of shots of preparing my product, whatever it is. Close up. I'm not seeing the person's face. I don't need to. The product is what sells it. Maybe you're the celebrity of your company, sure. But still, it's your product. I want to be famous like whatever chef and make that amazing food. How do they make the food? So I'm focusing on the food.
On the top right corner, there's a few icons. Add a pin, check notifications. We'll do add pin in just a moment. That's the whole crux of Pinterest. But then we've got here notifications. You see they changed the icon. That's more obvious. That's good. So Pinterest does pay attention. Here is your notifications. All these networks have notifications. Someone followed me. Someone replied to me. Someone did this. Someone did that. So you're going to see here, if anyone sends you a direct message, your stuff, what you've shared, news, meaning has someone replied to you, has someone um, favorited your stuff, notifications. On the top right corner then is your company icon, and at the moment you have the generic Pinterest icon. You want to get your logo there as soon as possible, just like the other networks. Why would someone follow you unless you have something to show for it? Let's take a moment here. On the top right, click on your pin. You click My Profile. nothing. I have no boards, no pins, no likes, no followers, and I'm only following five. I have nothing to show for it yet to entice people to follow me. I look like a spammer, because all the spammers are like this. They're all a pin. What we want to do is click here then, top right, Edit Profile. Here's where you can change your business name again in case you misspelled it or want to change it. Here's where you add a picture. Notice it's another proportionally sized graphic. We've seen some that are squares, some are rounded rectangles, some are circles, but they're all proportional. They're all square shape. So if, again, if your logo is a rectangle, it's going to get cropped or shrunk. So think about how your logo looks as a proportional graphic, as a round graphic. And at the moment, if I want to tell people, visit me on Pinterest, go to pinterest.com slash victorsbake1092. Rolls off the tongue. I want pinterest.com slash victorsbakery, which is probably taken. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you, unfortunately, if it's taken until you click Save. So before you waste time here, check your username and then save it, and it'll tell you if it's taken or not. But again, if you're doing this as a testing account, and you're going to delete it later, perhaps. Perhaps don't take your name. But I'm telling you here, this is one thing they should fix. It doesn't tell you if that name is taken until you save. It's taken. And you can change it multiple times, but if you claim a name now and then create another account later, you've already taken the name here, so you'll have to remove the name from this one or delete this account to claim it again. So be careful here. No spaces? No spaces, no special characters. Let me just confirm. I'm going to do an underscore. It, and then also you've got a limitation on the length of characters, 15. You can do underscores, so I did Victor's Bake underscore one. Um, I don't think you can put any other special characters though. Let me check a dash. It should tell you that too. That's one thing they've got to fix up a little bit. It says only numbers and letters and the underscore. So the business name is the name as it appears on Pinterest, which can be anything. Like Twitter, this is not unique. I can make a brand new Twitter account called Martha Stewart. Sure. But if I try to get Pinterest.com slash Martha Stewart, it's probably taken. Then we got a space for a bio. I believe there is a limit to this. And then these are the various keywords that you want to, you know, phrases. Okay, 160 characters. This is the spot for you to write 
about your company with some keywords and such, but not literally stuff it with keywords. You're going to write real sentences. And when someone searches for, you know, gluten-free bakery, I've got that keyword in there. I could be found. But with all of these social networks, there's not too much for you to stress about writing this because it's really going to be about the content that you share. And this can be edited whenever you'd like. <clears throat> Location. Um, this one... can be an actual address or a city or a locality. You know, I could say it'll accept San Diego County. So I can do that. Location, San Diego County. I can put an address. Even if I put a real address, it doesn't seem to be clickable, so there's like no map feature just yet. We can add maps a little later, but just adding an address like that doesn't actually make it active. I added a website, and this is confirm your website, because some accounts, if you notice, they have a little check mark next to the address, meaning this is the verified address to the real account, because I can put in here my website is MarthaStewart.com, but I cannot verify that. If you do confirm website, we, we, don't, we can't really get to it right now, but um, verifying does take a couple of steps, so we can't exactly do it, and it's a little techy, so I'm not going to do it, but verifying your website is useful so that you can show people that this is, the, this is my real legitimate business website not that other one. So you want to create that basic biographical stuff as soon as possible. Notice besides that, there's nothing really to do via design. Everyone's going to have the same sort of design. White background, space for you to write a little info, that's it. No, no other customization besides your logo unlike Facebook, Twitter, etc., because it's still about your content. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. The, th the big thing about Pinterest is, in contrast to Twitter and Facebook and such, is you post something and, it, and you post something new and it pushes down, and you keep posting new stuff and it pushes it down, it pushes it away. It, go it goes out of people's, out of people's attention. It goes away. It's, that, that tweet that you tweeted a year ago is still there, but to get back to it, it's kind of hard. Same thing Facebook, same thing Google+. Pinterest, on the other hand, allows you to organize your content so that people can get back to it whenever they want. You can organize it into pin boards, folders, basically. So let me show you ancient Pinterest right there. Look at that, that board right there. That's Pinterest in the real world. In the real world, it's a board. Stuff I pin on a board. Everyone comes into the room and perhaps looks at this at some point. And if we were updating this on a regular basis, you'd look at it on a regular basis. Let's say I got a board right here and one in the back of the room. That's this here. Different boards to put different content. This board right here is all about the social media class. And the one on the back of the room is all about the Android class. So I'm putting stuff for each particular class that cares about a topic. All of the stuff. For this class, I'm putting it right there. All the stuff for the Android class, I'm putting it on the backboard. Same thing here. I should create as many boards as I want, as I can, for specific topics of content that I will share. This board will have, for Victor's Bakery, this board will have all of my cookies. This board will have all of my cupcakes. This board will have all of my coupons. So I want to create boards for every possible thing I'm going to share. And I can't think of everything I'm going to share right now. That's OK. I can create boards whenever I want. I can delete boards whenever I want. But right now, we should take a moment to create 
three to five boards of possible things I'm going to share on this account. Let's try it. Click Create Board. It says Make one for recipes, home projects, and more. Give it a name. Before you type anything, notice what it's suggesting, such as places to go, recipes to make. Notice that it's active. It doesn't just say recipes. It doesn't just say, you know, landmarks. It says places to go, recipes to make, stuff to wear, you know, amazing ideas, be more active, be more creative, because these are the things that people are searching for. The, the people that use Pinterest and love Pinterest are use it more nuanced in that, what can I do? What can I read? What can I buy? So if I'm a bookseller and I'm going to sell books through my website and I'm going to get on Pinterest, I can make a board called Horror, a book called Art. I mean a board called Horror, a board called Travel, a board called whatever. Okay, that's fine. But what about spine-tingling horror books? What about amazing destination travel guides? And what about young readers adventure titles? You know, be more specific in the names of these boards. Be more active about what people can do or what can, they can expect in this collection of pins. Mm -hmm. Victor's Bakery. Yummy recipes to try. For you. Whatever. Whatever active way, whatever personal way. Someone checks my profile, they see yummy recipes for you. Oh, that's that's cool, that's interesting, that's personable. Let me check it out. Description. Again, a couple of sentences that describe what the board is about. Keywords and such to help it get found, to help it get discovered. Pinterest is going to help your stuff get found too, to some degree. So I'm going to say something like, Easy peasy recipes for the whole family that you can make with the kiddos. Again, what's the voice of your social media? I'm writing right here, very fun and friendly. Uh, like I'm talking to someone directly of, a, of my target audience. In the SEO class, we talk about a marketing plan, company profile, all of these things that also help us manage social media and SEO because look at the language of the big companies. Look at how Nike writes things and shares and interacts. Look at how Chipotle does it and McDonald's and Annie's Organics and, and um, Trader Joe's and such. You know, what's the language that they use to communicate with an audience? It's going to be different, different from from this company to that CPA to this bank. You know, if my bank is really fun and using millennial language, well, they're going for millennials, but I'm not a millennial and I don't want my money to be managed by, you know, frivolously. I want to deal with a bank that it seems, uh, you know, um, uh, serious. So your voice, everything that you're going to write in, and all of these things, you have to decide that. Here's what I'm writing. It's the audience that I'm trying to reach. Category. Again, there's a lot to choose from. You should choose one that fits it best because this is the, these are the categories people are searching. Remember at the top of search there were show me categories all about photography. Photography. When someone is looking in that category of tattoos, show my tattoos. Food and drink. You can only choose one at a time. You can change it, I suppose. Uh, it's not really a big tactic that I would recommend to change your categories often. They might sort of think about it as sort of you gaming the system, I think. But uh, choose a category and then uh, we will populate it. Secret. These are private boards. They're not findable on Pinterest. The purpose of this only you and anyone you invite can see secret boards. That's a way to get people to follow you on Pinterest. You're going to post a bunch of public stuff, you're going to have a secret board or two, and then you're going to be mentioning on Pinterest and other networks 
request our secret board for exclusive content and then get people to follow that secret board where you're gonna give some free stuff away and some sales stuff and some coupons and whatever that's the point of a secret board <coughs> Right now, this board that you're creating, only you can edit it, but I have other people in my company. I want other people to add to this board. Pinterest doesn't exactly have managers like the other networks. They do it on a granular level. They do it on a case-by-case -case level, on a board-by-board -board level. So I can say here, let other people collaborate, let other people add stuff to this board. They, of course, need a Pinterest account. But here's how you add more managers to the individual board. I have to look up if you can do it for many boards at once, but I feel that at the moment you have to do it individually. They'll probably do it, if they haven't done it already, they'll probably do it so that multiple people, you can add people to multiple boards eventually. So then I want to click the, the actual button to create it. Create it. That'll jump you over most likely to the board itself. Notice the address on top. It says I'm in the board of my address, of my account that is. I'm actually in my board. Question? You also create a board. You can delete and yeah. Yeah, we'll see that right now. You can always uh, rename them, delete them, add more to them, definitely. Make a note here that every board that you create has its own unique address. That unique address that you created, which is the title of the board, it put it up here. So that board has a unique address on the internet. You can use that. You can send out an email. Let's say you have an email marketing list. You have people subscribe to your newsletter. Here's a link to that board. You write an article, you send it to your, you know, 40 newsletter subscribers, and you have an article in there that says, don't forget to follow, you know, you read this recipe, don't forget we've got more, and attach, you know, copy and paste that link to your email, and it gets sent to more people. At the very least, they'll see it, the impressions. At the best, they will follow, because people can follow boards individually. Now if I go over to Chuck's account, don't do this yet, but if I go to Chuck's account, I can click to follow all of Chuck's boards, but I don't care about fun stuff. I don't like fun. I don't care about tattoos. I don't want to follow tattoos. I can follow individual boards. So we'll look at this soon, but I'm, I'm saying that that's why you want to specialize, create content for all of these possible target audiences. I've created one board. I want to create more boards. Uh, click on your on your logo again at the top right corner and go back to profile. It just it took me into my board of recipes here. I don't want to work with it just yet. Go back to my profile there. And it takes took me back here. I don't have any pins, I don't have any content posts in that board yet. I want to create another board. So chocolate. So everything about chocolate is going to be here, which could be cookies or cupcakes or fudge, brownies, whatever. You can create these however you want. Again, if you simply call this, you know, chocolate pins, that's okay. But Think, of, think like a marketer, which, you know, that's how do you entice people, basically. All our best pins about what you love. Chocolate. Another food board. You can create boards about any of these topics. You don't always have to focus on one thing. For example, on my bakery, what if I put it on DIY? What's DIY? Do it yourself. 
So that's a very popular category, DIY. People want to do it themselves, you know, save some money, make it healthier, do it yourself. So thinking outside the box a bit, I can put my recipes and such in DIY as well. Do it yourself, make this own recipe, make yourself do this recipe yourself. I'm going to create that. And it'll take me into the board again, but every time you, you know, you've got all your boards here and and whenever you edit a board, you know, when you're looking at the board, you have edit board. Or when you're looking at all your boards, you have edit board. And that's where I can go back and change the name again and description and all of that and delete. So if you're in your board or outside of your board, you can still edit, delete. Let's um, let's take a break, and what I would recommend is think of a few boards to create, three, five, ten, whatever. Think of a few boards. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll add pins, we'll add content, and we'll, we'll add it effectively. It's just about 12. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 12.10, and then we'll go on.